Ladies and gentlemen, the following preview has been approved for all audiences by the folks at Crossover Church. Crossover Church engages this series for the purpose of spiritual ideas. Use your own discretion and wisdom when watching the full series. Later. See you tomorrow. Good night, ladies. Kiss me all night for me. Well, is, is missing. I don't know where he is. 99 out of 100 times kid goes missing, the kid is with a parent or a relative. What about the other time? What? You said 99 out of 100. What about the other time? The one. The one. Ah! Ah! Guys, I really think we should turn back. Did you guys hear that? That's not real. You're in trouble, aren't you? We've sealed off this area. This is where it came from? Yes. And the girl? She can't have gone far. Find her. Do you really think it was a coincidence that we found her? The same place where Will disappeared? Something is going on here! Crossover, what's up? How's everybody doing today? It is good to be back with you guys. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? We're going to have a good time this month and open up the scripture and look at some spiritual truths and it's going to be good. But man, I'm so glad to be back. It's been three weeks, actually a month since I've been here. So uh, I know we had some good guests here and whatnot, but man, it is good to be back. My fam took a vacation. We took a road trip up north paid those high gas prices, <laughs> and rode all the way up to Niagara Falls. Anybody been to Niagara Falls before? It was my first time. It was beautiful. It was breathtaking. We're in upstate New York. Got some cool weather. I mean, woke up one morning. It was 49 degrees. It was chilly, for real, for real. But I uh, you know, visited a few other churches. But listen, there's no place like Crossover, y'all. There's no place like Crossover with you guys. No place like home. So it's great to be back. Um, every summer, uh, for the last number of summers, we usually do this series called Summer Fun at the Movies. And we take different movies, some throwback ones, some popular ones that, that are out right now, and we pull biblical and spiritual truths out of them. How many of y'all God ever spoke to you through a movie before? Like, and there was some stuff like, oh, right? Like, sometimes a movie can be like a modern-day parable, right? So we've used that to pull out some biblical truths the past few years. But what we learned since the pandemic happened is... Y'all don't watch movies anymore, or not nearly as much, right? Because now, what is everybody doing? Everybody's streaming shows. How, how many of y'all remember when you used to have to watch a show, an episode, and it left you on a cliffhanger, and you had to wait till the next week to see the next, remember that? I mean, those are the old, the old school days, right? I mean, they still got some shows like that, but now, most of us, uh, they, they do the same thing, the cliffhanger's right there, but then this little box pops up, and it says, the next episode starts in five, four, three. How, how many of y'all press the button before the, the, it even goes down? Yo, let's go. I can't wait to see what happens after that, right? So now most streaming networks, they release the whole series at one time, like 20 episodes, and you watch it in two days. It's called binge watching. It's not necessarily healthy all the time, but, but that's the reality of what so many people do. We're in a different kind of time, right? So this month, we decided to do something a little different. Instead of movies, we're going to be looking at shows and pulling out biblical truths and spiritual truths out of, out of all of them. And so we're not necessarily, like you saw the video, we're not endorsing these shows. We're not saying all of them are binge-worthy. It's almost kind of like binge-worthy with a question mark. 
Yeah, some of y'all might want to think twice about continuing to watch some of these things. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to, whether you watch it or not, uh, we're going to dive into some topics that we see from it, some deep stuff. We're going to talk about deception. We're going to talk about scams. We're going to talk about relationships. We're going to talk uh, about identity. We're going to talk about ethics, education, fatherlessness. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that we're going to tackle this month. We're going to cover a lot. But today, we're going to kick it off with a, with a bang because it's Fourth of July weekend. Right? And so we're going to dive into this show that right now is at the top of the streaming charts. They just released this weekend uh, the second half of the latest season, which is season four. And we're going to look at Stranger Things. And we're going to talk about demonic activity, demon possession, spiritual warfare, and how we can fight against the enemy because it, it's some real stuff, y'all. So I want to invite you to stand with me real quick. And we're going to read our opening scripture today from Ephesians chapter 6. Starting in verse 10, and, and Paul's writing this to the church in Ephesus, and uh, this is relevant to the church in Tampa as well, and it says this, starting in verse 10, it says, be strong, somebody say strong, in the Lord and in his mighty power. So listen, y'all, what does that tell us? We're not powerless when it comes to temptation. We're not powerless when it comes to the enemy attacking us and our family and, and things around us. We're not, we're not powerless. We, if you have a relationship with Jesus, we can tap in to his power, right? It says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, uh, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Pray with me real quick. Father, we come before you today. I pray for my family today that as we're in this battle of life, it's a battle at times that we can we can stand firm, that we can tap into your power, even when there's issues going on at our job or in relationships or in our home or in our family or with our finances or uh, different areas where it, it seems like everything is, is falling apart, where it seems like there may even be a spiritual attack. God, we pray that we'll stand firm in you and we'll realize that, that there's power even in your name. I got to pray today that there will be freedom, there will be deliverance, there will be some chains that are broken. There will be some new strategies that we'll learn or we'll be reminded of today how we can fight the enemy and win this battle. Um, so God, open our, our eyes today to the spiritual realm a little bit more. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. amen. Before you guys are seated, give somebody a fist bump next to you and tell them stand strong. Those of you worshiping online, type that in the chat. Type stand strong. What's up to everybody that's worshiping online from all over? You guys could type in the chat where you are worshiping from. And real quick, let me talk to the online people. If you guys are worshiping online, we finally have the 3D growth track is available online for you guys. So we know so many people watch from different cities and different states, even different countries. You now can go to the 3D growth track as well. We have a special one online for you. So go to the register page on our website, sign up. We actually had our first online graduate of the 3D growth track. Come on, make some noise. So, so that's available for you guys as well. So stand strong because we're in a spiritual battle. Uh, we are, our families are, our church is, our culture is, our country is, our world is. Uh, just open up your eyes and you can see all the stuff that's going on around us. We got to stand strong. And so, so here's the thing, y'all. The crazy thing is, is we live in the richest country in the world, the most developed place in the world. And so because we do... We have all this technology and all these comforts and all these conveniences. And so a lot of times the enemy uses that to blind us to the deeper spiritual things that are happening around us. If you've ever been to a less developed country, they're very aware of the supernatural stuff. They're very aware of the spirit realm. You go down to the Caribbean, you go to Africa, you go to some different places like they know that stuff is real. In America, most people are like, ah, that's not really real. Like, because it's all dressed up and disguised with all this comfort and all this technology we have. 
and the enemy can use that as a tool to kind of blind us and so we just go kind of along with the system that's happening but it, it, it's not really hard even in america with all of our comforts if we just open our eyes to the stuff that's going on around us we can see the enemy working i, I, mean, I mean you think about it you think about all the all the crime all the, the, the murder, all the addiction, all the, all the drugs, all the hatred, all the rage. There's so many people that are just so mad and angry right now. And we can see, like, the enemy is working around us. We get glimpses of that if we just pay attention, right? And then sometimes pop culture gives us some glimpses, too. And so that brings us to this show, Stranger Things. And uh, personally, I, I like to watch some sci-fi stuff. I like some stuff that's apocalyptic and like end of the world, futuristic type stuff. I can rock with that sometimes. I don't watch that all the time, but, but I can get with some of that. Sometimes I make my wife watch some of that stuff. She's like, oh, you know. <laughs> then we watch a chick flick for her, you know. So, um, so for me, like I heard about this show a, a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, I was like, oh, I, I can rock with that. But, but, but I, don't, I don't get into horror stuff. I don't get into stuff that gets demonic. And, like, I, I just don't open my heart to that. I don't open my house to that. I've always been like, no, nah, we're not going to watch that kind of stuff. But so when this show first came out, it was more like a sci-fi type of vibe, Stranger Things. And it was based in the 80s. We got any 80s babies in the building? Come on, make some noise. Right? So, so honestly, the whole 80s vibe, that kind of drew me in a little bit as well. The dress, the, the music. The vibe, the nostalgia, you know, you even saw in the opening clip, like the kids are riding bikes with the little light on it. I was like, oh, that's like E.T., <laughs> right? So, you know, all that kind of drew me in. And so, Stranger Things, if you're not familiar with the storylines about the, this group of teens from this small town, and there's this, like, secret experimental government lab, and nobody really knows what's going on there, uh, but it starts to get exposed, and they have this... They have this machine that's trying to um, drill like a hole into another dimension, into another portal, and they don't even know what they're about to open up a can of worms, right? And then they have some young kids there, and they're trying to train them the supernatural powers to fight against some of the monsters and things that are coming through this, this portal. And so it's just so one of their friends actually gets sucked into this other dimension. It's called like the upside down. And there's kind of like some monsters and, you know, kind of like a real sci-fi type thing. Um, but in season four, it crossed over from being like sci-fi to like demonic, right? And, and I'll admit, I, I watched uh, the first part of it for, for research. Because we planned on doing this series like months ago. We, we put this together, right? I'm like, oh, Stranger Things. And, and it's coming out like that weekend. And like, you know, like everybody's going to be talking about it, right? But it flipped to where there's this demonic type figure that is possessing people, putting them in a trance, and then killing them in a very gruesome way. I'm like, that's like exorcist stuff. Like, I don't watch that kind of stuff. Like, like so... You know, so I watched it for research, but part two just came out this weekend, and my wife told me, like, we ain't watching that. I'm like, I'm with you. We're not watching that. We're not going to continue to let that, you know, we're not, we're not going there. We're not, we're not going to watch something that might keep us up at night. You know, because I heard some people that told me, like, well, I, I can't watch that dur during, I, I got to watch that during the day. <laughs> well, then maybe you shouldn't watch it at all. I don't know. So... Um, for me, y'all, just a little bit of my background. I grew up in a Pentecostal, charismatic type background of church. Anybody grew up in an environment like that? Some people. I know there's a few people. So I know some of you that are like, what is that? Right? So that, that's the type of church where like the gifts of the Spirit are like highly expressed. Right? And sometimes it's amazing stuff and God can move and we believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Um, but sometimes in an environment like that, some stranger things can happen. <laughs> Some people can speak in other languages. Some people can give prophecies. Some people can fall over. Some people can shake and scream and shout. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's very genuine. But there's other times it can be exaggerated or manipulated or it can be a show for some people. And some of it can be kind of weird and spooky and even scary. And so for me for a while, because I, I saw some of that, the negative side of it, I, I got a little bit like jaded and I tried to distance myself from, from some of that for a while. I was just like, man, this is the, the y'all doing too much, right? Uh, and in those environments sometimes, 
People can tend, not everybody, but some people can tend to blame almost everything on the devil. Like everything's the devil's fault. They give the devil way too much credit sometimes, right? Because he ain't that powerful. And, and so, but sometimes, you know, if you're going through marital problems, it might not be the devil's fault. It might be your own selfishness. Not, not every lost job, dumb decision, financial struggle, or an addiction is an attack of the enemy. Sometimes it's just what the Bible describes that as our flesh. Sometimes our flesh. It talks about it in James chapter 1, verse 14. It says, temptation comes from our own desires, our flesh, which can entice us and drag us away. And these desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, what does it do? It can give birth to death. Yeah. So if you're taking notes today, write, write this down in your crossover app. So a healthy place to start for many of us is not assuming that everything wrong in your life is an attack of Satan. Many times it's just us. It's just us. Look at the person next to you say, it might be you. <laughs> it might just be you. You know? Uh, it might just be us. Or maybe it's not an evil spirit, but it's us unwilling to submit to the Holy Spirit to work in our life because we just want to do our own thing right sometimes it's just us being disobedient not wanting to submit now on the other hand here at crossover church we always try to give you a biblically balanced view of everything that we teach and preach here on sundays and on wednesday so on the other hand we also have to consider the fact just because people have the tendency to think that there's a demon behind every bush that doesn't mean that there's not demons because there is demons and Satan can kind of try to attack us. And there is all those kind of things that, that can go on. And just because somebody made a spectacle out of a deliverance session doesn't mean that some people don't need deliverance. Because they might have a spiritual oppression or even a spiritual possession that they need to get freed of. So, so we can't turn a blind eye to this stuff just because some people mis mistreated it and abused it. It's some real stuff. There's a very real evil dimension that's raging war against us and our children and our families and our church and our culture and our world. Open your eyes. It's obvious to see the world has got a lot darker the past few years, hasn't it? We can all agree. Like The enemy is like busy at work, y'all. So, so I want to tackle today um, an elephant in the room for some of us. I know that some of you here, maybe you've never thought about this before, but some of you, this has been a question, and uh, we've never talked about this exactly on a Sunday, but can, can a Christian be demon-possessed? So before I answer that question, I want us to kind of dive into some Bible, into some scriptures, and kind of unpack it a little bit. In, in Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2 says this. It says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins... Uh, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the what? The world. Obeying who? The devil. It calls him the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. So before you had a relationship with Jesus, or if you're here today and you don't have that relationship with Jesus yet or you're worshiping online and that's you haven't said yes to Jesus yet don't be blinded and think you're just doing your own thing don't don't think you're just innocently walking through life just doing whatever you want to do uh, because the scripture makes it clear that you are influenced by the system somebody say system there's a system in this world and and it says that Satan is like the commander of it so he's he's influencing it now now listen Please, take in context what I'm saying. I'm not saying that everybody that doesn't have a relationship with Jesus is demon-possessed. Not saying that. But everybody that doesn't have a relationship with Jesus is influenced by the system that is, is all around us that's controlled by the enemy. I mean, open your eyes to what is happening around us, especially the last two years. All the division, the us versus them, and everybody's riled up, and there's an increase in murder and crime and drug addiction and anxiety and depression and all this stuff that's happening around us that's influenced by Satan. He, that's, that's the system. He's trying to get everybody all messed up and all confused, and division is one of his, his biggest weapons, y'all. And so uh, when we're in sin, we can be greatly influenced by that, y'all. 
Uh, but we see in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in the New Testament, beginning in the New Testament, there's some people that are so influenced by it that they become possessed, where they can't even really control themselves. And we see several times in the Gospels where Jesus actually casted out demons. Casted out demons. So the, so the, question, is, the question is, can a Christian have that kind of possession? where they can't even control themselves and they're possessed by, you know, demons and all this crazy stuff, like some of the stuff we see in Scripture. Um, crossover's answer for that is no. No. So you, some of y'all can breathe, like, oh, yes. <laughs> I hope that I didn't have demons, right? No. Nah, if you have an authentic relationship with Jesus, it's not possible. Why? Watch this. When, when you think of Christian salvation, the Bible, the Scripture, it indicates um, it's like a transfer. Somebody say transfer. It was a transfer from us being an Adam to now being in Christ. So Adam, Adam and Eve, right? You remember Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Eve, the, the first man that, that sinned and brought sin and death into the world. And the world is, is kind of controlled by that vibe. There's sin and death. Everything dies. So when you didn't have a relationship with Jesus, you're in that system, right? But now there's this transfer and now you start a relationship with Jesus and you are in Christ. And guess what? Your sins can be forgiven. You were dead in your sins, but now you become alive in Christ. You become adopted into God's family. And now you can tap into his power. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You can be forgiven and amazing stuff begins to happen. The Bible says the Holy Spirit now lives inside of us. It occupies our soul. So a demon can't come live in that same space where the Holy Spirit is living. Those two spirits don't mesh, right? Your, your house can only have one master, right? Your temple, that's what the Bible refers to our body as a temple. So, so no, no evil spirit can live inside of you and, and possess you. Both can't live there. The scripture says this, though, in 1 Peter 5, that, that Satan is like a roaring lion. He's out to attack people that believe in Jesus. He's out to attack the church, right? But we can stand firm against him. There's going to be battles. There's going to be struggles. He might try to lead us astray. He might be around us, you know, influencing people around us or situations or things we might feel a uh, heavy weight, but he can't possess us. If you have a relationship with Jesus, he can't possess us. God uh, is way more powerful than Satan. Satan is not all-knowing. He's not all-present. He, he doesn't have all those powers that God has. He does have demons, and guess what? They do their research. They can watch us. They can watch what you're reading, where you're going, the things you're doing, the things you're watching, the things you're listening to, the portals that you're opening up for different things in your life. They, they study us. They're smart. And they look for a weakness. And if they find that weakness, then they can try to attack, especially in that area. It's really like... Satan and his demons are looking at the algorithm of our life. Think about that for a minute. Because you know there's an algorithm on every social media platform and websites and on the internet that watches everything that you click on, everything that you watch, everything that you buy. It watch, And then it tries to feed you more of that. Right? And so the enemy looks for that as well. If you go and look at a website you shouldn't be looking at, the enemy's going to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to try to attack him now in that area. We're going to try to attack her with that because we see that's a weakness. And we're going to try to feed you more of that and keep you in that and try to wrap you up in, in that bondage. So can we sometimes be in some bondage as a believer? Yes. But that doesn't mean we're in possession. Right? We have power over the enemy. Jesus resurrected. He conquered sin. He conquered death. Although we can still face battles, we can be victorious with Christ. Come on, make some noise for that. Because I've read this thing, y'all, and in the end, we win. We're on the right team if you fall on Team Jesus, right? And so in the first part of Stranger Things, season four, there was this demonic figure um, named Vecna, and he was literally like putting people in a trance and, and possessing them and then killing them in a very gruesome way. And so one of the girls that was from the friend group, her name was Max, um, she was beginning to get sucked up into this trance and, you know, her friends saw what was going to happen. They're like, oh man, she's going to be the next one to get killed. We got to figure this out. How can we fight against this? And they discovered that a way to fight against it was 
music. And so they figured that out, and they immediately were scrambling to find tapes. It was the 80s. And they had a Walkman, and they put this Walkman on her and found her favorite song. She was in this trance, and as the music started to play, like, she came out of it. And so for me, when I saw that scene, I was like, wow, that's powerful because music is powerful. Does anybody know what the original purpose of music was? Anybody know? Worship. Ooh, some of y'all know. Some of y'all know it was, it was worship. That's what, that's what music was created for. It was created for worship. And, and so, you know, our, our enemy, Satan, Lucifer, right at one time he was a choir director in heaven. He knows the power of music. He knows how to manipulate it and change it. And, and so today we see a lot of music that is negative and it's turning people and influencing people in the wrong direction in the wrong way right they're listening to their favorite songs but it's not protecting them it's dragging them farther into the darkness right and the number one music genre now the music genre that was always number one to me in my life when i grew up as a kid now it's number one for everybody is hip-hop and and, and hip-hop today is is filled more than ever with profanity negativity with violence with materialism, with sex, with um, all kinds of stuff. And now, even in the last couple years, there's also satanic stuff in hip-hop. We didn't used to have that back in the day. It was the rock music that had that. Hip-hop was like, we didn't, we didn't rock with that. But now it's, it's got sexually s- stuff and, and satanic stuff, stuff they didn't never had before. But that makes sense because now it's the number one music. And so Satan's going to be like, okay, rock music, that's yesterday. Hip-hop now, we're going to influence that more than ever with all of our negative stuff. But listen, just because some music is negative, or even hip-hop can be negative, a lot of the mainstream stuff, it's music. And it can be used to glorify God. It can be used to worship God. And and here's the thing, if you're taking notes today, y'all, worship can be a weapon. Praise can be a proclamation. Lyrics can set people free and chains can fall, right? That's what can happen when we get in the presence of God and we begin to worship him. Y'all, how many of y'all ever felt God doing something inside of you that you couldn't explain during worship? You felt maybe a weight lifted off of you in worship. Maybe even like an addiction you had, it was broken when you were in worship or a decision you were asking for an answer for and God dropped it on you in the middle of worship powerful supernatural things happen when we're in worship and the enemy can't get through that barrier when we're in the middle of worship because it can cause confusion for the enemy it could cause the enemy to just bounce I'm out of here <laughs> I don't like this stuff it can set you free y'all it could break generational chains generational cycles to break addictions when the enemy's attacking your heart and your mind y'all press in and praise second chronicles chapter 20 a huge army was attacking judah and king jehoshaphat and check out his response in verse 18 it says then the king jehoshaphat he bowed low with his face to the ground and the people of judah and jerusalem did the same thing so they bowed down and they're worshiping god but then watch this the atmosphere shifted so, so everybody's bowed down on their faces before the Lord. But then a group of people, they stand up together. And they begin to praise the Lord. They, they begin to praise the Lord. Look, look at verse 19. It says, Then the Levites from the class of Koath and Korah, they stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Now, who were these guys? They were the Levites. They were the worship team of Israel. They were the remix of Israel. They were the maverick city of Israel, right? They were the group of people that ever since the time of King David, they were appointed and anointed to be the ones that would praise and do the ministry of song in Israel. So look at what happens next. Jehoshaphat, he appoints the frontline troops, right? They're getting ready to go into battle. This big army is about to attack them. But the frontline soldiers are not swordsmen, they're singers. Why, 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 are you putting the, why are you putting remix out in the front? Why you, got, why you got the singers out there? 
Jehoshaphat aims to conquer with a choir. God said that the battle was not their fight. Just watch what he's about to do. So what better way for Israel to meet their enemy with, with songs of victory in the front lines? Check out what happens in verse 21. It says, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they sang. They said, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures, what? Forever. And at that very moment, they began to sing and give praise. And the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, Mount Sur to start fighting amongst themselves. Now look at verse 24. It says, so when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness to see their enemy, all they could see were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Did you catch that, y'all? So, so what, can we, what can we learn from this scripture, from this passage as we get ready to close today? Spiritual worship and spiritual warfare can be carried out with singing. With singing, with, with worship. Right, verse 19, when all the people fell down on the ground to worship, there was a group of people that stood up to praise. The Levites. Verse 21, when the army went out to meet the other army, the worship team was there and they were singing songs of praise and songs of victory right and I think the writer really wants us to learn from verse 22 that the enemies were thrown into confusion by the songs of God's people and we started today in Ephesians chapter 6 when we first stood up at the beginning of the message and we read Ephesians 6 and it reminded us we're not battling against flesh and blood but we're battling against spiritual realms evil principalities and so we got to fight in a different way not in the typical way right but in a different way right so spiritual songs can be an effective weapon against our spiritual enemy that's trying to attack us trying to discourage us trying to oppress us he can't possess us if you have a relationship with Jesus right but he can still try to influence us discourage us get us down all those things he might be around us but but worship can cause our enemy to be confused cause our enemy to be like all right i'm out of here i'm gonna go mess with somebody else because i can't take all this praise i can't take the name of jesus being said another worship story that we see in the new testament paul and silas uh acts chapter 16 they were thrown in jail and they had been beaten and whipped and they were all, all bloody and and so around midnight the bible says that they started singing I mean, I don't know about you, but I probably wouldn't have felt like singing at that point. I'm all beat up and busted. I probably would have been complaining like, God, why'd you let this happen? They started worshiping. And what happened? The Bible tells us that an earthquake happened. And their chains and their shackles began to fall off. There's power in praise, y'all. Even in the middle of prison, there's power in praise. God can bring freedom and deliverance in all kinds of different ways. God's Spirit, His Holy Spirit is our great hope against Satan. Ephesians 5, 18 and 19, last verse I want to read for you today. It says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and spiritual hymns, and spiritual songs amongst yourself, making music to the Lord in your hearts. So we can battle with song, y'all. And here at Crossover Church, we're known for our music. But our worship team that's up here that sings, y'all can come on out, remix. Come on, give it up for our worship team. These are frontline soldiers right here. This worship team is not up here to entertain you. Yes, they might sing great. It might be like, wow. But they're not here to entertain you. This isn't a show. They're leading us into God's presence. Pastor Darnell is not just a great artist and a worship director you know what he is he's a commander of this company that's up here he's a commander of this company that's that's leading our body before God's throne it's leading us many times even if some of y'all have been in a battle all week and it's leading you into that battle in God's presence now and things begin to change chains fall addictions are broken weights lifted off your shoulders 
And it gives us that, that power then to step out into the world and love our, our neighbor and love our city and fight against the darkness that's around us in our city. There's a lot of darkness, y'all. This is the front line soldiers right here at Crossover Church, y'all. And so if you've been going through a spiritual battle this year, like I have, yeah, your pastor's been going through some spiritual battles. I'm okay, I'm good. But it's been a battle in some areas of my life. My family and different things happening. It's been a battle. But you know what? I'm going to stand firm. Like the scripture says, I'm going to worship. I'm like, come on, bring it. God's got me. He's way more powerful. And so if you've been going through some battles, I want to I invite you to stand up with me today. We're going to close today, and we're going to worship together. And, and I don't know what your struggle is today. I don't know what your battle is. I don't know some of the things that maybe you and your family are facing right now. But God knows. And so I want to encourage you in these next few moments as we worship together, lean in. And you can have victory. Things can change right now, right here. And if you're here and you want to get prayed for, you can come to the front. We're going to be praying for some people. If you're here and maybe you don't even have a relationship with Jesus, you're like, man, I want to start following Jesus. I want to connect with him. I want to make sure I, I, I'm on the right team. I'm following his purpose, his plan for my life. I want to conquer some things in my life. Maybe you've never even said yes to Jesus. You can do that today as well. So we're going to worship together. The, the frontline soldiers, they're going to lead us into worship. We're going to sing together. And if you want to get prayed for, you can come down to the front. But just don't spectate during this time. They're not entertaining us. I want to encourage you, if you've never had before, I want to encourage you to make these words that are up on the screen your, your, your heart's cry. Make it your prayer right now. And watch what God can even do in this moment. So, some of you are going to experience some things, I believe, in these next few minutes that you've never experienced in your life. But you've got to be open to it. You've got to be open and say, okay, God, do something new in me. Do something new in me. Set me free in some ways. And freedom can be found right here, right now. So let's worship in Jesus' name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power, say, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Say it again, there is power, say, there is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 
crossover, sing it out, say it. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, How many of y'all believe that change are breaking right now? I know it. I feel it. I see it. I want to just invite you to just lift your hands with me towards God. It's a universal sign of surrender just to say, God, I can't break these chains on my own. I can't fight this battle on my own. I need you. God, I come before you today. I lift up my family that's here. God, it's so good to be back to see my people. But God, I know that some of my people in this room, there's some battles they're going through. But the good news is, is you're a chain breaker. You're a way maker. You're a miracle worker. You're a healer. God, I pray in this moment, whatever people need, that you're going to give it to them right now. And it might just be hope. That you'll give somebody hope today that walked in hopeless. I know some people that might be at the end of their rope. Wondering what's next. But God, I pray today they're going to get hope. And God, I pray beyond just that, that feeling, God, I pray that tangible, supernatural things are going to happen in their life. Even today, even tomorrow, even this week, circumstances are going to change as those chains are broken, God. So God, show yourself to us. But God, I pray it's, it's not just this moment when we're gathered together in this room or we're streamed in. 
But God, I pray that this week and moving forward, we're going to know that we can tap into this power every day. We could cut down the time that we're on social media and we can spend some time in your word and in your presence and we can put some worship music on as we're in the car and it can be a weapon to help us through the battle of our days and our everyday lives. God, help us to be strategic in this battle and stop being stupid, <laughs> but to be strategic. We got smart people in here and we got a template today. We were reminded of some things that many of us already knew, but we haven't been tapping in. Help us to tap in to each and every single day, God. It's happened to that power. And watch how we elevate. Watch how we move forward. Watch how we progress in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And God, I pray may people around us see that change and see that difference. And may they want it. May it be contagious. Use us to touch this city, God. And fight for our neighbors. And fight for our coworkers. And fight for our family members and our friends. And the battles that they're going through. And point them to Jesus. We lift up all these things in Christ's name. Everyone say, amen. Come on, make some crazy noise today for Jesus, our healer, our provider. Yes. I want you to just, I want you to make some noise for our frontline soldiers, for Remix, leading us into God's presence, leading us into victory. Man, I love my church. I miss this, y'all. Listen, we're so grateful you guys came to worship with us today. If you were here for the first time today, welcome to Crossover. This is how we do. This is how we do. But if you are here for the first time, we have a gift bag for you in the center of the lobby. In just a moment, we're going to dismiss service. Um, so head over there. We've got a gift bag. If you're worshiping online for the first time, if you go to the website, crossoverchurch.org, click on I'm New. We'll send you uh, one of the, the gift bags as well in the mail. And uh, we got some cool stuff coming up the, the next couple of weeks. Anybody got teenagers? Uh, anybody got teenagers in the house? I'm praying for you. Pray for me. We're praying for each other. Uh, coming up, they have Movement Sunday in the gym today. Our teenagers are over there, so we can talk about them. No. But uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, we have an arts camp for teens and a whole bunch of different classes that are going to be offered from um, songwriting to, to dance to, to hip-hop to photography, all kinds of really cool stuff. And so you can get the information on the website to sign up for that. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. It's going to be some really good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, this Wednesday night uh, is, what, what, what is it, Pastor D? Where's Pastor D at? It's verses. Okay, it's in two weeks. It's, it's in two weeks. In two weeks, I'm thinking, it's, in two weeks, we got worship night that's coming up. But this Wednesday night, we're starting this new competition called Verses. You just got to come and see. It's going to be a competition. It's going to be some fun. So if you never came out on a Wednesday night, come out and hang out with us. It's going to be some great stuff. Uh, hang out for a little bit after service. Fellowship with some people in, in the lobby. The Hip Hop Shop, go check it out. We got some brand new gear that just came in. And um, yeah, I, 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 come say what's up to me. I missed y'all. So we're going to go out with our mission statement today. We're going to put that on the screens. This is our, our declaration that we share to live life in 3D, discover, develop, display. So let's read it on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Our mission is to empower people to discover, develop, and display Jesus Christ in every area of our lives. God bless you guys. Have an amazing 4th of July weekend. Go get some fireworks at the fireworks stand out there in the front. Thank you so much for being with us here today in service. This was an awesome message. It was an awesome experience. And I hope that you guys got something, at least one thing out of the message today. We hope that you take your notes that you took this message and apply it in the coming weeks, in the coming months. Um, don't forget to sign up for baptisms that are coming up. All of the amazing things you can find on our website. And also, if you just prayed that prayer with Pastor Tommy and you want to start your relationship with Jesus, Please text the word LIFE, that's L-I-F-E, to 77411, and we would love to send you some next steps. Happy 4th. We, guys, we hope you guys have an amazing holiday tomorrow and that you are safe and you have a great time with your friends and family. We love you, and we will catch you next week.